Hello guys welcome back to Sky Recap, today, we'll be looking at a 2021 American action movie entitled, The Tomorrow War, spoilers ahead, seat back and enjoy. The film opens up in December 2022, with Dan Forrester a high school biology teacher who has a daughter named Murray Forrester and a wife named Emmy. A Christmas celebration is being held by the Forrester family while watching a live World Cup football match on television, the guests are enjoying themselves. Dan takes a break from the celebration to speak with one of his possible employers. He applied for a position at a prominent research center, he is also a Green Beret who retired from the military 15 years ago, unfortunately his military history prevents him from being accepted. Dan goes inside saddened by the rejection and sits next to his daughter Murray. His daughter tells him everything will be alright, as they watch the game from the couch, the television begins to flicker just as a player is ready to score. A brilliant blue light beams on the player from the front in the stadium. As the light becomes larger, it shakes the entire stadium and many people emerge from it as if it were a portal of some sort. The group's leader is the last to emerge. She tells them that they are people from 30 years in the future and humanity is in the midst of a battle with non-humans and it's going to lose, so they've come to seek assistance from their elder people. Can't tell if this is a joke or not. Everyone is taken aback fast forward a year almost all governments begin to develop jump facilities to build up their military. Once the announcement from the future was revealed, only a handful of the initial thousand military men sent into the future made it back alive. After that, global leaders decided to begin the first draft of personnel for the fight. The government now selects people to be sent into the future, to combat an extraterrestrial race known as, the White Spikes. The majority of civilians are sent to battle for seven days. Most never return, those who do return are eternally scarred. Dan is in a class when he receives an emergency call. He is taken to a facility where he is drafted into the war by future workers, his arm is fitted with a draft band. Dan has no option than to comply, because his wife will be drafted if he doesn't. He returns home and informs Emmy about the situation. She urges Dan to consult with his father who is a mechanical engineer and maybe can get the band removed. Dan has a strained relationship with his father. James Forrester. When he was younger, James had abandoned Dan and his mother, with no way out, Dan pays a visit to his father in order to remove the gadget. Before James can remove his draft ban, he and Dan get into a fight and Dan goes back home. Emmy has surrendered to her fate. Murray is devastated when Dan informs her that he's been drafted, despite the fact that, Dan will only be gone a week. No one knows if he'll ever return, a few days later. The family says their final goodbyes with tears in their eyes. Before being jumped through the wormhole, all drafted soldiers are trained for seven days. Dan meets Charlie, a fellow soldier. During training the troops are divided into two groups with Charlie and Dan being in the same group and they come across Dorian a man who has been drafted three times they train for the first day and then take a day off, suddenly alarms go off as Charlie and Dan are chatting about their families all soldiers have to be ready to leave as soon as the announcement is made in the future where they're being sent. There's been an emergency, the last research center dedicated to the study of white spikes has been attacked. The war will be lost if this facility is wrecked, which is why the soldiers are being sent before they begin their training. In the sky in 2051, the system fails. Dan, Charlie, Dorian, Nora, Cowan and a few more troops are among the few who survive the plunge. They land on a rooftop swimming pool near Miami Beach. The mission now has to be modified to a rescue operation. According to Mission Control, they must locate the lab researchers in a neighboring building and transport them to a secure location. Dan is appointed as the team leader of one of two teams by the colonel in command. He orders his crew to follow him into the building which they do keeping an eye out for white spikes. They see that the streets are empty as they travel through them, since everyone has been exterminated. When Dorian informs Dan that he is wasting his time attempting to save his pals, Dan begs his squad to check around and stay careful. Dorian discovers the body of a white spike as they arrive at the research facility. He slashes its claw in order to save it as a memento. As Dorian and Dan lead their separate teams forward, they slowly reach the top of the building when they get to the facility. They discover that the whole study team has died. Dan informs the colonel who appears to be upset, she instructs him to retrieve the critical samples from the lab and leave because the area is totally infected with white spikes and there are no other humans remaining. Mission Control chooses to destroy. It fighter planes are dispatched to carry out the mission. 
The teams now only have 6 minutes before they blast the entire area. They carefully gather the necessary lab samples and descend the steps but halfway down they look back up to find a white spike following them with an arrow from its limbs. It kills one of the soldiers, the teams begin fighting at it then they see a huge group of these creatures emerge to chase after them. They rush downstairs shooting at them. Some of the soldiers are killed while others flee the scene. Dan confronts one white spike and shoots at it causing it to flee for a moment. Finally the stairway comes to an end and they enter the passageways as he distracts the monster. Dan instructs the groups to go. He fires at it again and again but to no gain, after he runs out of ammunition, he comes upon an axe he tries but fails to strike the white spike with it. Dorian and someone else come just in time to kill the creature rescuing Dan. They bombing will start in 3 minutes. Mission Control dispatches some Humvees to their aid all they have to do now is get to the Humvees and they'll be safe. Soldiers are in the streets but they're completely overrun by white spikes. They finally spot the Humvees, but they're too far away to reach them before the white spikes overtake them. As the bombing begins, they continue to run while the others flee Nora and Cowan fire at the monsters, everything turns black as the entire city catches fire. Dan wakes up at a Dominican Republic military encampment later, only he Dorian and Charlie manage to escape. Dorian confesses during their conversation that he only has a few months to live due to cancer and that he's nonchalant about being killed. A soldier then summons Charlie and Dorian, they've been put on a new assignment, the colonel on the other hand summons Dan. He meets her and discovers that she is his daughter Muri. Dan attempts to hug her but she pulls back. She tells him that she has a PhD in biotechnology and is the research team's head. Dan is ecstatic about his daughter Muri, then asks him to join on her mission to apprehend a female white spike. On their journey, she informs him that humans are little more than food for white spikes who have wiped off more than half of the globe in just three years. Dan curious about his own future asks this future Muri how he had died and what had happened to Murray and Emmy, Muri doesn't continue the conversation. They arrive at the cave containing the female white spikes, they're less common than males and are thus safeguarded by them. A group of soldiers try to catch the female in the cave but she kills the majority of them, Murray directs Dan to remain in the helicopter while rushing down to the cave. During the battle, the female assaults Miriam almost kills her, Dan observes many male white spikes racing towards the cave to save the female. At that very moment, he makes the decision to enter the cave to save Muri. He astoundingly protects Murray from the female when he arrives and they manage to pull the female white spike into a cage and then imprison her. The cage is then tethered to a helicopter which takes off but the white spikes latch onto one of the helicopters. White spikes are approaching from all directions, the chopper they were clinging to crashes, but the two survived by driving to a nearby shore. So Dan and Murray jump into a car and flee. During the ride, Muri tells Dan that he abandoned Emmy and Muri when she was 12 years old and then he died in a car accident when she was 16 years old. Muri was there when he took his final breath at the hospital. Dan is adamant that he would never abandon them. They are rescued by a chopper which transports the female to a lab in the middle of the ocean. The female is sedated and moved to a lab. The next morning Muri intends to use the samples from the female's body to develop something that would completely eliminate the white spikes. Dan pays for a visit at the lab. They've already developed a poison that has some effect on the males but females are immune to it so now they must figure out how the females combat the poison in order to produce something that will have an effect on them. They work together on numerous tests even if they discover the poison, they must figure out a means to mass produce it and circulate around the world. Murray comes up with a solution and suggests that Dan takes the toxin back in time to halt the entire White Spikes invasion before it ever starts, but he doesn't want to leave her behind to die. Right then a computer voice states that the sample matches 100, suggesting that the poison has been identified. The female White Spike growls, at this point, she is awoken and is attempting to free herself from her shackles. Furthermore the male White Spikes are destroying the area trying to save the female. Hundreds of thousands of them are in the area. Murray puts Dan in a helicopter and gives him the poison to take it back in time, finally the jump link is activated, the entire crew's duty now is to securely transport Dan to the jump link. The male white spikes manage to find the female white spike and set her free. There's only 5 minutes left before the leap, but the creatures have infected the entire area, Dan and Murray are fully surrounded by them. While going near the jump link they fire at the white spikes but their numbers keep growing. 
One of the white spikes launches an arrow at Muri knocking her down just as they are about to reach the chopper. While Dan assists Muri, the entire place erupts into fire, Muri is unable to move due to her injuries and when a white spike grabs Muri and pulls her away. The two exchange said goodbyes, Dan tries to save her but is unable to do so and now he has barely 20 seconds to jump. Dan is dragged back into the past along with a sample of the poison as Muri falls into a sea of white spikes. Several more soldiers retreat to the present. But in the present when Lieutenant Hart places Dan on the stretcher, he informs him that the poison is useless because the jump link has been damaged even if they can mass produce it in the present, they can't, send it forward in time to destroy the white spikes in 2051. Charlie is also returned, Emmy is waiting for Dan outside the building when he exits, Dan appears to be disturbed by the events but doesn't say anything. Young Murray approaches him with a welcome board she created herself. It takes a moment but finally he embraces, Murray. Later, Dan is sitting by Murray's bed when Emmy wakes up that night, Dan emerges from the shadows to tell Emmy about the toxin in his run-in with the old Murray, Dan now wants to figure out where the white spikes came from, so he can use the poison before they take over the whole globe. Dan visits a bar and meets Dorian who offers to assist him. They visit Charlie's lab to examine the white spike claw Dorian brought back as a souvenir, then they find out that the white spikes have actually been living beneath a Russian glacier for thousands of years and that they will dig up an attack. The three of them then seek assistance from mission control but they decline to assist them since the entire planet is riven by internal trouble. Protests and rioting are taking place all over the world, they will not be able to fly to Russia. Dan decides to call his father since he's an engineer with connections and turns to him for help, his father agrees to assist and gets a plane and a pilot ready for them. Lieutenant Hart and her crew also join them on their mission. They land on the Russian glacier and trek uphill in search of proof of the presence of White Spike. When they arrive at the location their gadgets shut down so they search the area and discover a huge glacier with a magnetic field as well as a cave leading into it inside. The crew discovers a wrecked and stranded extraterrestrial spacecraft, they enter the spacecraft to see whether there are any white spikes inside but they come across a different alien species that does not resemble the white spikes, they then proceed to another room where they discover white spike pods, they now understand that the white spikes aren't aliens but rather extraterrestrial weapons employed as a planet clearing ploy. They inject the toxin into a few of the pods killing the white spikes inside. The crew is thrilled that the experiment went well but other pods begin to tremble and the white, spikes within struggle to escape. Some of the creatures escape before they can implant them with the poison, the monsters flee the cave where Dan's father and Charlie are fighting them on the other side of the ship. Lieutenant Hart notices a whole new colony of them. They don't have any option at this point except to blow up the ship. They set out explosives. Dorian hits the button causing it to explode, killing everything inside except for one white spike that escaped. Dan, his father and Charlie are the only ones remaining now. They chase after the female white spike, who has fled. Dan and his father finally track down the female and open fire on her, she falls down a cliff while trying to save herself. She assaults them once again wounding them both but Dan injects her with a toxin and eventually kills her. Only Dan his father and Charlie have survived. Dan then takes his father home for the first time to meet Murray. He's committed not to repeat the mistakes that Murray cautioned him about in the future. The film comes to a close with the family hugging. Thanks for watching, subscribe and make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it.